thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I know we're, I think, second to last before we uh, hit the road. So we're grateful for your attendance and taking a little bit of time to learn more about how to digitally transform your restaurant operations. It's a, a topic near and dear to my heart. Um, I've been selling technology into the restaurant industry, both food restaurant companies and food retail companies mostly for the last 20 years with a few different organizations and I've had um, uh, you know, a lot of success and a lot of it, it, you know, excitement working in this industry and events like this make it super, uh, super fun. So I'm fortunately joined by some great panelists today and we're gonna have a, a lively discussion hopefully and um, I'll let them introduce themselves. I got Matt, John and Danielle uh, for some great organizations and uh, I'll let Matt go ahead and introduce himself first. All right, so end of the conference almost. I love how packed this place is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, come on. You guys are the warriors, I love this. And I promise you're gonna learn some things today because our job is to share with you some bits of information and knowledge. Um, I've been in the restaurant segment for 28 years. I know I look a lot younger, but I promise you it's been 28 years. Uh, I have a phenomenal story to tell. I'm the founder of Wing Zone, a company I started in my fraternity house kitchen with a $500 investment in 1993. Subsequently, um, opened one single restaurant in Gainesville, Florida, in a major college town, and uh, began to open more corporate stores as a young 20-something year old, uh, following the same model. My vision was to be the Domino's of chicken wings. And I think we did a pretty darn good job. Maybe not to the level that I expected it to be, but um, I have some, some important information to share with everyone. Um, I am the founder of Wing Zone and will always be the founder. But uh, earlier this year, I sold the majority interest in my company to Capriati's Sandwich Shop out of Las Vegas, a great group of people. And they're gonna carry on the legacy of something that I created um, and I couldn't be more happy. Uh, yesterday, I started my first official job. I've never had a real job before. So it's kind of crazy. I'm the CEO of a company named Franchise Founders, and it's a true entrepreneurial company. We're a franchise incubator where we work with successful business owners um, who have a desire to franchise their company. What's different about us than a lot of other people in that segment is we invest into the franchise company. So we're putting the capital up and have a great infrastructure of legal and financial operations, marketing and franchise sales. And we've made six investments in different brands, some you probably have never heard of, and we're not just restaurant, we're other things as well. Uh, last thing I'll share with you is that I am a true operator. Um, even to my last day within the company, I wore an operations hat. It's something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And I'll share with you some successes we've had today and obviously some challenges. So I'll pass it on to my younger counterpart here. Yeah, thank you, Matt. It's a great, uh, great story. So uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, my name is John Sherman. I'm here with Stickies, um, so a little bit of background um, on myself and on Stickies. So, you know, I actually started my career in the finance industry, worked at a bank and a hedge fund for a little bit, but um, ended up starting Stickies in my mid-20s. Um, I founded it with a uh, childhood friend hey, of mine. Way. Love that. Yeah, I mean, Love that. you know, we were young and naive, and, you know, if I had known then what I know now, who knows how it would have played out, but, you know, it's been, it's been an incredible, uh, that was, basically 10 years ago. And so, you know, neither of us had any restaurant experience. Um, we, we started Stickies really out of just a passion for food and specifically uh, fried chicken, um, what we serve. And, you know, really thinking that w we could put a fresh take on something that people really love, but we thought there was an opportunity to really move forward kind of how people were, were eating chicken fingers and kind of taking it out of just the only Southern and only kids menu and trying to, you know, bring some more flavors and some new twists to it. And also from a, from a brand perspective. Um, so we opened up our first restaurant in 2012 in uh, the Greenwich Village neighborhood of Manhattan. And the first six or seven years was focused on, you know, as we were learning and, you know, 
evolving the the operation a bit. Um, we were you know focused on growing within Manhattan, and then um, over the last few years we've gone out into Brooklyn and then also into uh, New Jersey. So as of today, we have uh, 13 locations across New York and New Jersey, and um, you know still focused on growing and really continuing to fine tune and perfect our operations. Thanks, John. All right. Well, I'm Danielle Williams. Um, I am the Ops Services Manager uh, with Checkers and Rallies. Um, you know who we are already. Uh, we are a double drive-through concept. We have always been a double drive-through concept. So, uh, you know, we've kind of got that drive-through process down pat. Um, but I have been working with Checkers and Rallies for seven, a little over seven and a half years. And uh, I actually started out with them in their food safety side. Uh, it was a brand new uh, position that opened up. And I thought, why not? You know, had some restaurant experience prior and thought it would be a, a good opportunity to learn something else in the, in the restaurant industry. So started out with um, the food safety and the pest control piece and you know, dabbled in that world for several years and then recently was uh, promoted, transitioned over into the role I'm in now. And that role is currently creating, managing, and operating all of our in-house audits, checklists, all of our, um, we utilize it on our, our development side. You know, so it, it takes up a lot of our, uh, a lot of my time personally, but um, I, I think it's great because it, it's a constant development and digital is where we're headed. And so my a digital expansion uh, library is ever growing. So I'm excited to be here to answer anyone's questions and share you know, what's worked out for us and what hasn't worked out for us. And um, yeah, just excited to be here. Awesome, thank you, Danielle. Absolutely. Danielle's a customer of ours too, by the way. So I thank am. you for your partnership <laughs> and, and being here. Uh, my name is Keith Cole. I'm the Vice President of Sales at Compliance Metrics. I've, I've been with the company for five years. Uh, next month actually is my anniversary. And what we do essentially is we help a lot of the largest and the best, um, both large and small restaurant operators digitize what's happening inside the four walls of their locations. And that includes everything from you know, HACCP checklists, food safety checks. We, we work with companies like che um, Chick-fil-A, obviously Checkers and Rallies, um, Inspire brands, all of their, all the Inspire brand companies are leveraging our technology or, or will be soon. Uh, companies like RBI, but also, you know, smaller organizations that wanna make sure that that playbook for success that they've come up with, right, that works, how to properly run a restaurant, how to make sure the guests are satisfied, their experience is positive and in a way that the brand is designed. We provide the tools to digitize those things and allow the operators to self-assess um, whether they're, you know, checking whether they were, the guests were greeted properly at the door or, you know, the proper uniform is being worn or, you know, the parking lot striping is, is uh, not faded or the, you know, the, um, the, the beautification or the, the, the look of the restaurant is up to date. So whatever um, is important to the brand, we help the operator capture that information as easily as possible without being disruptive. So the tools are super easy to use, both from a user standpoint and an administrator standpoint. You know, creating these checklists need to be, to e be easy to, to, to use, right? Or um, we've experienced that uh, these things don't get done if they're confusing and, and complicated. So that's a little bit about us. We also provide the tools to audit companies that leverage technology to go out and do audits every day. That's another part of our business. And we also have a great supply chain solution. But I think for this audience, you know, the in-restaurant assessment tools is really, um, you know, what, what we would probably do well for you. And um, I'd like to just hear more from you guys about how you've you know, manage these great brands that you've started and sold and currently are growing. And like, how are you currently, you know, managing those brand standards and making sure there's consistency in the restaurant? And Danielle, maybe we'll start with you. Absolutely. Uh, so when we partnered with CMX um, January of last year, uh, it took us a few months to create everything uh, within that we wanted. Uh, we wanted to completely go paperless within our restaurants. Uh, 
That being, we wanted to get away from the ability for the restaurants to unfortunately pencil whip an, uh, temperature tracking forms. You know, it's very simple that if you, you're just trying to check a box, then you can just write whatever you want on there and magically you're in compliance with all of our requirements. Uh, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to take that away from the restaurants and from any of anyone that wanted to pencil whip a, a form, a required form. So we automated it. And so bringing in that digital piece, we incorporated a Bluetooth monitor. And so there is no abilities for them to go through and, and say that they had a particular temperature on a food item. So that checks the, you know, the food safety side, uh, make sure that we are truly in compliance. Uh, and that also gave us the visibility piece. So for, you know, we are predominantly a franchise owned uh, company but we wanted to have the, the visibility and be able to truly see from the corporate side into the franchise side, we get to have all of the visibility into all of our required checklist. So it, that, was, that was very, uh, that was key for us. And that was what allowed us on the digital platform piece to have that visibility instead of anyone decide, you know, we would occasionally ask for you to, this was terrible, but you know you have to have it. You know, it was, can you please email us a copy of your of your th most recent 30 days to make sure that you are in compliance? Imagine asking over 800 restaurant locations to take the time to find a way to email 30 days worth of temperature tracking forms to make sure that you're in compliance. So you can imagine how many people didn't do it, and so it, becoming digital was key for us because it just gave us not only for the health department side of compliances, but it also gave us the visibility to the brand standard side of, of our business as well. One of our key um, forms that we currently use, we call it our serving up wins form. And what that incorporates is an extensive form, but it allows us to have our full food safety piece on the front end. And on the back end of that form, it incorporates all of our brand standards. So it gives us the ability to see if the restaurants are, as Keith was saying, you know, maintain the integrity of the building. Are the parking lots, uh, you know, up to up to par? Are you know, do you have the drive-through? You know, is it safe for the cars to physically pass through the drive-through lanes? You know, do we do we need to paint our buildings? Do we need to do anything to the exterior for a beautification piece? Um, but it also allows us to see, you know, our outside patio because very few of our locations actually have dining rooms. And so it allows us to see our patio areas and are they weathered? You know, do we need to replace any of our patio furniture out there? Um, so it, it's really opened up the, uh, the true visibility in our restaurants and being as across the nation as we are, um, allows us to not have to travel from one location to another. We can physically look at the, the pictures because inside the platform, it does have the ability to take pictures and, and uh, allow us to have that visibility. So I think that's one of the, the main um, reasons why we went digital was just so that we would have that simplicity. Awesome. John? You know, so for us, um, both our operations and the technology we use to support our operations have really been an evolving story from when we opened up our first restaurant to where we're at now. Um, you know, when you're at one or two restaurants, um, you're so close to it. You're really, you know, you can be in every restaurant every day and, you know, making sure that everything is being done the right way and all the dishes look proper, you know, are being made properly and, you know, your store is being maintained properly, all of those things you're very close to and you don't really feel like you need necessarily those tools to help you stay close to it. Um, but you know, as you grow and you realize that you can't be in every place at, at, you know, every day and at every time, you know, that's when you really need to start finding the tools to feel like you can keep a pulse uh, and have visibility into what's happening in every restaurant. And that's where, you know, as we've grown, we've kind of identified needs along the way of not only you know, really trying to define um, the procedures for how we do things, but what, how can we utilize technology to 
communicate all of those things and to share all of those best practices and training materials and also um, have visibility into how stores are adhering to those standards and are performing. And, and so, you know, for us, it's really been kind of somewhat of a need base. I'm, you know, I remember, I remember back to, you know, our, I think when we just opened up our fourth location, we did a rollout of a new menu item. And, you know, at that, it was at that moment where I was still hands-on doing it all. And I was running around between the stores, trying to make sure that they were all doing it right. And of course, one of the stores wasn't making it right. And, you know, I, I just remember like all of that, like my own disappointment of like knowing like how we were doing it, we need to really evolve to make sure that we're have, you know, everything of, you know, procedures and standards for how we do things, making sure that that can be easily dispersed through all of our staff. And so, you know, I think a big thing for us has been focusing on training. I, you know, again, of course, I know that I'm sure anyone who has, you know, operates a restaurant knows that training is just hand in hand with everything that, that you do and what leads you guys to be successful at your restaurants. Um, but, you know, it's also easy when you have one or two, it's easy to overlook that because, again, you're so close to it. Um, and, you know, for us at Stickies, while we have a relatively simple offering, you know, we're also making everything in-house from scratch. Our chicken is coming in, we're hand cut, we're, we're hand trimming all of the fresh chicken that we get, we're making our marinade from scratch, we're marinating everything in every restaurant. We have 18 dipping sauces that we make in every restaurant. And so, you know, while it's a simple menu of sorts of chicken fingers and fries, uh, you know, there's still a lot that goes into it and there's a lot of opportunity for things to, uh, you know, not be done according to how they were originally intended. And so, you know, for us, a, a, big, a big lift was getting all of those training materials down and then we, we rolled out, a, about two years ago, rolled out a learning management system where, you know, we could ensure that every time you bring somebody on new, and training them that they're all seeing the right thing. Because what we had found, you know, when we were even at five or six locations, you know, there were instances where, oh, we heard this store makes this dish this way and that store mm -hmm. makes that dish that way. And, you know, sometimes maybe customers didn't notice and they were both fine. But, you know, obviously we, we knew that that's really not the right way to grow. And, you know, having that consistency across every restaurant was going to give our best experiences to the, to the most customers possible. And, you know, a big part of our menu is also is, you know, really some aesthetically pleasing dishes. You know, we make some chicken finger dishes with a number of different sauces and garnishes and they really, they really pop and they're really photogenic. And, you know, the worst thing, you know, to see is like, you see somebody post tag you on Instagram and then you look at the picture and you're like, you know, that dish wasn't made the way that, you know, that we intended it to be made. And so, yeah. you know, really, I think having those digital tools where you can have videos and pictures of this is how each thing should look um, is really key. And then, you know, for us really, the, the, you know, the next level of something that we've done more recently is, you know, roll, rolling out an audit tool to where, you know, we can have uh, people from our management team and in and, and various uh, roles in the operations organization being able to go in store by store and make a very detailed assessment of every single thing that we're doing from starting, starting from the sidewalk and the, you know, are, are the front windows clean to, you know, food safety and, and everything in the kitchen and temperatures. And so, you know, it, it's, a, it's having those tools in place are, even for me right now, just give me a lot more visibility into, you know, how each store is being managed. And, you know, it's, it's really, it's really val those tools have been really valuable for us. Uh, and then, uh, you know, another tool that we've uh, recently rolled out, which has also been very valuable for us is getting direct customer feedback. Uh, Again, we can try to see things obviously from our own perspective and, you know, we can have our own list of what we're looking for, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're here to give great experiences to customers. And so, you know, we want to know what they're seeing and, and whether they're enjoying something or whether they're having issues and, get, and getting that in real time and, and really having a process to ensure that we're looking at that and we're communicating with our, man with our general managers and, and really getting visibility into you know, how are our customers responding to, to our food, to our service, to our restaurants? And, you know, and so I think having those tools have really enabled us to just learn a lot faster and, you know, understand, you know, how each location is doing on, on just a number of different, a number of different things. So, you know, it's, 
certainly been um, a process where you know we get to a point and then we realize, okay, there's another tool out there, and I think we're at a place where we're using a lot of different tools to do different things, and um, you know it seems like almost never ending of like you're just going to keep on adding tools to the, to the to the list, and so obviously you can't do that forever, um, but you know, what we found is a lot of times there is a specific tool that does this thing the best and really enables us to get really visibility into, into how, you know, what's happening in every restaurant every day. So it, we've, we've been a, it's, it's been a big focus of ours of trying to, you know, utilize these different uh, new technology. That there's, you know, there's new technologies being created every day to support the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. And so you know, really understanding kind of what you need operationally and what are areas of focus and what are the best tools that, that you can utilize has been a real big uh, help for us in just evolving of, you know, how we manage our businesses. I, I'm so impressed, John. I mean, honestly, at, at 13 units to start at a young age, and I, I'm going to piggyback on some things that you talked about, but I love the fact that You've invested in LMS, you have an audit evaluation tool, and we're gonna expand upon a little bit about, well, how many tools should each restaurant be working on? Because there, maybe there's too many out there. But I wanna tell you a little bit about um, really my background. I was always the visionary of the brand, and I was really the one that always looked maybe a year or two years in advance. Um, and with that, I wanna tell you a little bit of some stories of some things that happened within our company. Um, through my career, we've opened over 150 locations, both domestically and in four countries. And we did a phenomenal job at openings. I mean, we were buttoned up from training, from ops, from food quality, sales. We always had strong openings. We believed in strong openings, not soft openings. And what ultimately started to happen is we do a 30-day follow-up and you know, maybe they weren't following some of the best practices that we had instilled. And then we'd go back for 90 days and 180 days. And we started to look at restaurants that had started to be open for a year or two later. And there was a major flaw in our system. And that really dealt with training. The title of this topic today is how to digitally transform your restaurant operations. But I believe that before you start talking about operations, there's a fundamental piece that we all go through which is about training. You're gonna hear me talk a little about LMS, and I'm surprised that I don't believe there's any vendors here that actually you know, sell services of LMS, and it stands for Learning Management Systems. Another terminology is e-learning. And I'll tell you a little bit about like how a, a chronological event of the tools we've used through my career um, at Wing Zone. You know, first of all, I really believe that if you're a director of ops or you have um, a, a fiscal responsibility on budgets, you've got to invest uh, into resources, into e-learning. And we did that many years ago. Initially, we started with a company called Tortle, and it was a web-based type of e-learning system. New employees would sit down, they'd watch some videos, they'd take a few simple tests, and we had good ad adoption, it was working, but obviously technology changes. So about five years ago, we moved to a different system, which was really now mobile-based. So we didn't have to have a new hire sit in front of a computer, they could do it from their phone. Um, and then about six months ago, when Capriati's bought us, they were working with a different system, which is called One Huddle, which really now becomes app-based. And the differences between each of these are important for you to understand. You know, one's web, one's mobile, one's app-based. And I think the important thing that you've got to look at is, A, what's your budget for this stuff? And I, and I don't want you to think that you have to have hundreds of thousands of dollars to implement a successful LMS system. I think our first system we spent $10,000 on, the next system was 15,000, and I think the last one that we did was somewhere around 20,000. There are some monthly user fees, but they're not onerous. So it's definitely affordable whether you have three restaurants or 300. The important thing that I wanted to share with you is that 
how do you implement this into your system? What content are you putting on? Is this internal content that you're using from simply filming on an iPhone for an LTO? Uh, how do you push these things out to your employees? But we solved the problem by implementing a great LMS system, which was a lack of training for new hires post opening. And um, so I always look at um, operations, but I really go back to the training piece of it. And as we get into some Q&A and maybe after this, I'll be able to expand a little bit more on uh, LMS and the systems that we've used. You know, a lot of the decisions that you're going to need to make if you look at implementing something of this is, do you want the company to provide you the content and the videos and some charting, or, or do you have someone internally that can do it yourself? And the other thing is, everything doesn't need to be so perfect. So if you're gonna teach someone how to filter a fryer in a two minute video, then show it, shoot it on your iPhone. You know, that's the real world. It doesn't need to be some fancy camera crew coming in that's going through this perfection thing. Get to the content, make it quick, and ultimately go that route. So I'll turn it back to uh, Keith and yeah, probably no, have some different conversations. For sure, that's really great uh, feedback and I, I love your passion around LMS. It's, um, you know, I think in addition to obviously the training it's providing, it's also while you're asking your employees to do that, you're building a culture and, ex and setting expectations that, you know, excellence is the, is the standard, right? So by, just by, and, and some of our clients also, we, as they self-assess and they're conducting these checklists, when they have to remediate too many pickles on the sandwich, the chicken sandwich, for instance, um, not only do they fix the issue on the spot, but our software drives them to the LMS system that you've invested in. And then it, it actually forces that operator, that employee, because every employee in the system is, is you know, part of the hierarchy that we've implemented, we can drive them to the LMS. They conduct that training exercise, and, it, and they're just you're building a culture of food safety. If it's food safety related, you're building a culture of operational excellence. If it's an operations issue, and you know you measure what matters, right? If you're if you're taking the time to invest in this training, it's obvious to your organization that it's important, and I think it just builds a, a great um, operational you know environment. And one of the other things, John, that I heard you say that was, was pretty compelling is I think in, in organizations and kitchens, you know, you get these, these cooks and these chefs that have these entrepreneurial spirits and they want to make things their own way and put their own twist on things a little bit. But you can use digital technology, capturing images and things like that of what, what should that plate look like? What should that recipe look like, right? And you can audit against that. We call it recipe assessments. And there's you know, like... Cheesecake Factory is a customer of ours, and, and they do have a lot of entrepreneurs in their kitchens, and they want to make sure that every dish is the same, whether you're in Michigan or California. And um, they, they, you, you know, they use digital tools to make sure that happens. Yep. So I wanted to just mention something, and then we'll move it down the line here. Um, John mentioned like audits. We call them evaluations. You know, uh, for many years, we used an Excel spreadsheet. So we go and visit restaurants on typically a quarterly basis, sometimes three times a year, and we'll do a, an evaluation. And uh, we use technology to really advance that. And we're working with a company right now um, where we do our audits simply from our field consultants uh, from their iPhone. And what I love about it is um, it's, it's more efficient for them. They're completing their audit or evaluation. It's automatically emailed to the franchisee it's emailed to, it was emailed to our admin or compliance director. Um, but there's also great pieces where you've got to be, there are required pictures. So you've got a required picture of walk-in cooler temps, fryer temps, uh, health certificates, whatever is there. So you can't complete the evaluation until you've completed each of these pieces. And believe it or not, going from an Excel spreadsheet to something that is really an app on your phone uh, our, our field consultants loved it. Um, and it became kind of uh, an advancement in technology that everyone can use. I also want to tell you that this is an incredibly affordable type of tool. This is hundreds of dollars a month 
not thousands of dollars a month. So for any size system, you can implement this. Um, and there's really no, one of the things we always questioned during evaluations was, is it consistent, right? So if I do an evaluation versus John, it, are we gonna keep, come up with the same score? So by requiring certain things like pictures and documents and things like that, itself kind of scores how it is. Now, it could be that maybe our points are one off or two off, but I'm not gonna score someone a 93 and he's gonna score them a 77. So a huge play in technology, very affordable. And even if you're company owned um, or franchise owned or a combination of both, evaluation should be a tool that you use to coach your team. And that's exactly what it's intended to be. Last thing I'll say about it is all of these things are stored on a cloud. So ultimately, you can look back at an evaluation that was done two years ago. Uh, you know, Obviously, we have access to a lot of it. So that's really helpful. Because truthfully, if we had a turnover in a field consultant role, we got to then figure out, well, who did the last eval? Where is it? Um, so take advantage of some technology out there. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious to see maybe what John's doing on his LMS and maybe audits. Yeah, I mean, to the, to the audit piece, we, that's actually one of the most, the most recent tools that we rolled out. And to your point, you know, it's really cost effective and, and not, you know, it, of course, you never want to keep on layering on monthly fees and monthly fees for every new tool. But, you know, for us, we've had a lot of great success with it. And, and similarly, it requires you, everyone's doing the same exact checklist. And it's very detailed. It requires pictures across the board. And then it has, and then when you go and do the evaluation, it has a uh, follow up. So it actually, you can say, here's the four things that we need to follow up with the restaurant on. And then you put a date of when it needs to be fulfilled by. And then we all get email ping saying, hey, this follow up is late, or they have a follow up on these four things due on this date. So it's really great for tracking and accountability. And, you know, we just started using it. So we don't have the same, the long track record of going back in time. But, it stores all of the previous evaluation. So, you know, you can see if this store had an issue with this, for, this, for this audit that we did, you know, did they fix it when we came to do the next one, you know, three or six months later. So, you know, having all of that stored in one place has been, has been super valuable. Um, and, you know, to your point on LMS, you know, I, that it's certainly, you know, uh, really a big uh, part and big focus of ours right now. And it's been an incredibly valuable tool. I mean, First and foremost is training is so important. You know, to your point about training comes really, it's the, it's the foundation of operations and how can we operate our restaurants excellently if we're not putting everyone in that position to be excellent. And, you know, to your, it was interesting hearing your story about, you know, you did great new store opening trainings and then you'd find that uh, new hires coming on later on weren't getting the same level of training. You know, I think for us as, but you know, even earlier on, but even you know, even not you know, more recently, we're still we have a good training program. We're still adding to it and building it out. Um, and so, what we find is you can run somebody through a week or two weeks of training, and they can learn most of it. But invariably, if you don't follow back up with that and retrain regularly, people will forget a lot of those things. And you know, people a lot of times teams will move to what they're seeing around them more so what they were trained. And you know, you. You're, we're giving people a lot of information in a short period of time. You can't remember everything. You know, you're never going to be able to absorb every single piece of information we're throwing at you, you know, in your first couple of weeks on the job. And so having that LMS tool you know, allows not only for new update, for you know, whether it's a new product launch or just a new, a new procedure that we're rolling out or a new process that we're doing, but even just some, you know, and we're working on this, what the right cadence is, but some regular just, retraining and making sure that everyone is kind of staying up to date and, and, and staying, you know, keeping it top of mind of how we do everything and kind of the standards that we want to enforce. Yeah, and I'll just add one thing on like operations manuals. So, you know, we all spend so much time and money on developing these binders of operations manuals. Um, yes, they're a tool and they're meant for franchisees and upper management, but no hourly employee um, is going to read through some binder that's 400 pages. And I think we've got to adapt to some changes there. I think it's about shorter information, really the core stuff. And um, 
I happen to think like traditional operations manuals are gonna be a thing of the past in the weeks, months, and years ahead. But I am curious to hear a lot from Danielle on kind of what they do with at an 800 unit brand, which we're all jealous about. Uh. <laughs> well, and it's, as I, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you guys, um, it, you're not, it's almost kind of like, it doesn't matter how many, how many locations you have, you're all experiencing whether you've got one location, five locations, 20 locations, or 800. You all experience the same challenges. And our end goal is the same, to provide the tools to our employees, to educate them. And one of the, something that we found recently, I would say within about the last year and a half, two years, was the attention span for a crew member, they're not gonna, you know, to Matt's point, they're not gonna sit there and they're not gonna read the ops manual. So what we started developing are clips and it was no more than about a, a 45 second clip of how to go through a procedure. And then you kind of do a kind of a question and answer piece on it, but it's not, you don't have to answer five questions. It was answer these three questions, find out if you really learned something from the little clip that you just watched, and then you move on. If you answer correctly, you get to move on to the next stage. And, and it may even sound a little silly, but there's celebratory events in between each one. Congratulations, you've now excelled in in this, this level. Um, and it, you, you find that the crew members actually appreciate the applause of in the, the acknowledgement that they did do it right. Because whenever you do see, you know, one of your crew members and they are in training, um, I've been in the restaurants personally and watched them and they get so incredibly frustrated whenever they can't move past a particular module. And there's, and then you have to sit there and you have to say, okay, it's okay. It, it's, you're gonna be fine. Don't worry about this, let's just go back. And so it all goes back to training, but it also shows you that they care and they do want to move on and they do want to learn the process and they wanna learn the next step. Um, so that was one of the items that we really, uh, it, we improved on. And, uh, and our, we're ever evolving in our LMS because to your point, when you have over 800 locations, it's not like you can fly everybody in to one location. You know, you have to come up with a system that is universal, that you can use not only on the corporate side, but we use on the franchise side. Everything is standard. We, um, you know, make sure that everyone has access to it. And, and, and Matt, you were talking about that ops manual. Um, we, we got rid of it. Good. And what we did is we developed a system, um, we call it Checkopedia. Hmm. And uh, a little play on words there. And uh, so we call it uh, Checkopedia. And it's, it basically is like a Google search. And you sign into it and you can ask it anything you want. If we have ever developed it within our system, you can put in the search bar, uh, type out just keywords, and it's gonna give you a list of what you might be looking for. And when I tell you transitioning from an ops manual, that's like this thick, <laughs> into a digital, that hit a learning curve. Because everyone was used to grabbing that book flipping the pages, looking through the index, finding out what, where, you know, what page they could find whatever they were looking for. So that was a bit of a transition uh, you know, for our users. However, once they started seeing it and once we took the print away and you had no other option, all of a sudden everyone went, ah, okay, all right. And then they saw just how simple it was and how it narrowed down their search and how it became such a time saver. So the digital piece and the LMS piece and just the learning tools, it has, going digital was such a time saver 
in our locations because you were no longer looking at you know, finding this binder, finding this book, finding whatever you were looking for, putting it on, finding space on your desk, flipping through pages. And, you know, we're, we're not a very large square footage concept. Um, majority of our lo locations are 940 square feet. And whenever you look at 940 square feet, majority of it's a kitchen. And you don't have a lot of desk space. You don't have a lot of, you know, learning space. And so we had to learn how to eliminate a lot of uh, the space suckers, such as the books, the manuals, the, you know, even our, you know, why we went digital with our other um, required checklist in the restaurants, because we needed to have something that was right here in the palm of their hands. And we've allowed our operators to have, we supply all of our restaurants with iPads and all of them are preloaded on the company side. On the franchise side, they have a little more flexibility. They can kind of add and choose what they want to put on their iPads, but they come, they come ready for them. They come ready with the CMX app. They but, can't, so they don't have to worry about that. Well, I was just going to add to that. The cost of printing and updating those binders, yeah. you, can, you, can, you can pay for the technology. Absolutely. Uh, and it, it's literally a wash. It, um, it, it yeah. really is. And you don't understand how much money you are truly spending in print until you stop. And then you make revisions and variations and you have version control issues, right? So, Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's, so. that's incredible. And one of the other things that I, I hear and in this conversation is, you know, I could just go on and on. But one of the things I heard about, you know, the policies and procedures and running the restaurant um, ac according to the playbook. Right. I mean, the industry historically has looked at third party audit companies to c go in once a quarter, two times a year, do the snapshot of what's going on in the restaurant. And that is great. You know, we're all for third party audit. But when you have your policies and procedures digitized, you can assess based on those using these micro assessments and doing little small checklists or surveys, you know, based on those policies and procedures without, you know, counting on a third party and going through that expense so often. So there's a, a you know, a great value in third party audit. But if you micro assess based on the policies and procedures repeatedly, again, you're building a culture, you're continuously training but you're just gonna have better results because your teams are always audit ready. They're ready for public health to come in if you're doing risk-based auditing. Public health comes in and they see that you care and you're taking the time to self-assess. You build equity with the jurisdiction because they know that you're taking their job seriously, right? And, and we've seen that over and over where you know, partnerships with the local jurisdiction becomes really strong when you're self-assessing on risk-based food safety issues. So it's something you can do affordably, easily, you know, time and place for a third party audit, but we see more and more companies leaning towards self-assessments and checklists and, and more activity than just counting on you know, that snapshot in time. And let's face it, that audit sometimes looked as it's punitive. It's a retrospective view of what occurred a month ago. It's, you know, there's remediation that needs to happen based on the audit, but you know, it, it, you know, you, it, with, with a self-assessment tool, you fix it you know, right away. I wanted to just add a few things on this LMS piece because um, I just want to hit a few key points here. I'm a huge fan of app-based LMS. And the reason for that is, I, I shouldn't say every person, but we haven't run across a single team member that doesn't have a cell phone or a smartphone. Um, it's a great way to communicate also from a management level or a brand perspective down to every cook in the system. It's also done by job classification. So if we're rolling out a new product, maybe it goes to everyone. If there's a POS update, maybe it's only going to certain managers. The other thing I wanted to mention is that um, we've got to put ourselves in the shoes of the actual team member. Okay, I'm 50 years old. I'm not the prototypical team member within a wing zone or a Capriati. So you got to think, you got to start thinking like they think. Gamification is huge and it's working well. This whole idea of what is the incentive? How do you compete with people within your own restaurant or within the system? And there's some great incentives that can be done at a very reasonable cost. Uh, one of the things that we rolled out 
was some additional swag for those that reached a certain level. You know, every time I go to a wing zone, um, I'm wearing some sort of professional, maybe Nike golf shirt or something. And everyone always says, man, I love that shirt. How do I get that shirt? Because I'm only wearing the typical, you know, if, if someone's in the restaurant, maybe they're wearing just a traditional standard hat, shirt, whatever it may be. So there's a million ways to do it, but use it as an incentive and not as a penalty. And the cool thing about it is it's tracking everything and you want people actively using the app. It's part of the new hire um, checklist. I filled out my paperwork. I've downloaded the app. I've filled out my information. It's also a great way to communicate because you can do push to your team. And it's another way that you can use one piece of technology rather than using, well, I've got a text you know, program or I got this. So the, the technology is out there and it's incredibly affordable. Great yeah. stuff. You know, I love that that swag idea of how, you know how to in, encourage you know really just engagement with all this. You know, I know for for our, our LMS, you know, one of the things we we really try to encourage is just getting our teams to engage in the tool and utilize a lot of the different functions. You know, I know we have our our training team is is really great about just proactive communications and putting out even just polls and questions and pu pushing you know, trying to get feedback and thoughts from a lot of our, you know, from teams from all of our restaurants and really trying to get them engaged in using the platform and so that they check in there and they see the updates and not just, okay, I went through my training checklist and I did all the different modules, but, you know, this is a place where I can engage with our, my, you know, my team members and colleagues from other restaurants and see all the new, see all the newest updates and information and, you know, I think we're still thinking through, I mean, you know, thinking through what are the best ways to incentivize that. Um, but, you know, we're really, we're really trying, focused on, you know, rewarding that LMS engagement because I think it's really, really critical. That's great. I think we're uh, ready for some questions. Hopefully um, the audience has a few questions for our panelists. Uh, does anybody, anybody have any questions? <laughs> I use InTouch, I-N-T-O-U-C-H. Um, it's less than $100 a month. And uh, I, uh, we use something called Measure Up, which is, again, I for way less than $100 a month. And then there's CMX. <laughs> <laughs> and we're more than that. <laughs> <laughs> But you offer so much more. Yeah, we, we do. We have a great I, I, I can't say so much more. I don't know the other systems. <laughs> Ours is simple, but to the point. But yeah. yeah, simple. Actually, we're not. We're very competitively priced. The one thing about it also I want to mention is that, you know, you can update things so quickly. Let's say that we're having a problem with mm -hmm. um, a certain product or we're having a spec problem. So you can add into the, into the eval tool, like, all right, count product on boneless wings and show me a picture of the date code. So it's so easy to make adjustments on the fly. I, I would completely agree with that because that's one of the, another enticing feature of going digital. We didn't have to, when Keith said, you know, the, the cost of print, you don't have to reprint or wait till a certain time period to, you know, to make it affordable. Going digital allowed us to if there was a change that happened in the food code and we needed to do something to our assessments, our personal assessments, and that was directly aligned with that, all I have to do is just log in, pull up that particular audit, put it in an edit mode, change the verbiage, change the scores or change the requirements, click save, and, I, and it automatically uploads and every single one of our users automatically has access to that change. So, you know, to Matt's point, it's, it's having that digital capability allows you so much freedom whenever there's a change that needs to be made. You're not having to wait out for a certain time period. Yeah. So I think that's key. Yeah, I wanted to mention one thing also, like I would ask each of you not to raise your hands, but just ask yourself internally, do you have the ability from a, from a brand perspective to communicate to a frontline cook in store A? And if you don't, you've got to solve that problem.
Because the mm -hmm. traditional way of doing it is franchisor or brand communicates to the franchisee or manager. Then they disseminate information to their people to some level. But it's so easy now to go directly to the end team member. And if you're not there, it's something you should seriously consider and fix. Go for it. Uh, first question for Danielle. Uh, Checkerpedia, did you build that yourself or did you outsource it? We built it ourselves. How long from start to finish did it take to build out? Uh, that one was, that was an extensive build. Um, we only had two individuals that were working on it at the time, uh, and that was their full-time job, and it took them about eight months to build. Uh, how many, <laughs> how long has it been? So you oh, kind of I'm sorry, I thought you said how long did it take us to no, implement no, it? No, no, I did, I did. Oh, okay. Uh, but kind of following up with that, once you guys launched this, how long did it take to actually, for it to be used properly or effectively? Uh, that's a fair question. It probably took it about six months. It was maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit longer, uh, but we also kept pushing it. So the way we worked it is, you know, we are a very hands-on company. We offer our restaurants um, support. We don't. We call our home office the restaurant support center because that's what we are. We we are the support system to our restaurants, and we and we take a lot of pride in that. Um, our each of our departments is assigned to something. Uh, so as, as if anybody ever reached out to us, it didn't matter if you were on the company side or the franchise side, you came to us and you asked us as the subject matter experts and we got you the answer. Or, and so what we ended up doing was we were saying, hey, we're gonna, we can give you the answer, but if you really want to get it faster than waiting on us to check our email or answer our phone or you know, to get back with you, here's the link to Checkopedia. Hmm. And we, even, we would embed it. And so that we, we basically taught our operators to help themselves. And, I, and, that's, and that's what we always kept pushing and we still push it to this day. We still, if anyone ever reaches out, I mean, one of our most frequently asked questions is usernames and passwords. How do I reset this? Or how can I get in? And as soon as they ask that question, here's the link, mm. here's how you do it. And so it, it teaches them. And as you know, it, turnover is, is our, our a nemesis for us all. And so you're always going to have someone that still needs to be taught how to access a particular system. And so that's where it's really key. As soon as they ask us those questions, hi, here we are absolutely, here's your information. But if you ever run into this problem again, here's the link to how to reset all of your username and passwords. So. Especially, uh, man, John, uh, what uh, challenges on the back end did you find in terms of IT support? Uh, I know a lot of this stuff's cloud-based, but how do you keep from logging on to a myriad of applications? Did you have to do things on the back end with servers? Do you have internal IT staff or outsource that? Sorry, that's to me? Yeah. <laughs> oh. You can have it. Yeah. No, no, uh. you're fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, look, that's a challenge. You know, we have a, a great director of IT who, you know, kind of met. We, we did bring on a platform to manage logins across all of our, all of the different platforms. So, you know, because again, before that, it was just constantly getting bombarded, you know, to Danielle's point about, oh, I forgot my password to this thing. Oh, you know, what's my login to that? So, you know, um, we, he, we did find it, he did utilize a tool to consolidate all of that and um, systematize it. Um, you know, we don't, we don't have our own internal server where we store every, all of our information on one place. You know, we're utilizing the kind of cloud-based servers of the different uh, technology platforms that we work with. Yeah, listen, a lot of things are going to single sign-on if you're with Fran Connect or any of these systems. Like, it's well worth it if there's, even if there's an upcharge for single sign-on. So from our system, they can sign on for work uniforms, for print material. It's all one link, and it links to them without having them to do a single, a, an additional username and password. Hi, this question is for all of you. How do you ensure that a new hire goes through the proper training steps that you've created, you know, digitally? And 
what steps do you do to, um, I guess, hold the managers accountable to that? And then I have a follow-up question. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I don't actually know, to be honest with you. I think that it's ultimately up to you know, your uh, director of ops, VP of ops, down to the field level consultant. I will tell you that when we do the evaluation, we do an, a, an on-site audit of usage of, well, for us, it's one huddle. Um, there is back-end reporting that shows you restaurant, number of active users, number of logins. And the cool thing is it really is, uh, it lists like, you know, top performing restaurant to lowest performing. And we do publish that kind of as a, as a way to kick the ones that are at the bottom in the butt and then to kind of celebrate the ones that are there. So, um, I mean, we, we, there's nothing that we do from a default perspective or anything on that side? You know, for us, we, you know, our training started with checklists and now it's evolved to our, to our LMS system, but, you know, we still have a detailed checklist of training for training that every new hire has to go through, making sure they're hitting every training module and now those point to our learning management system rather than a, a different, you know, kind of paper checklist. But, you know, but again, you know, to, to Matt's point, at the end of the day, it's it's about having the that mindset and having the right, you know, director of operations and non operations management in place to, you know, really hold their teams accountable and making sure that everyone is going through all of those modules and completing all of them and getting up to the standard that, that we need them to. Um, for us, we uh, we put it on their scorecard. And um, each of the, on the corporate side, we have full visibility of the employees and we know whenever they have logged in and when they haven't logged in and whenever they actually complete each of the modulars and that are in there. Uh, on the franchise side, we do have to leverage on our franchise business consultants. So they do have to follow up because we don't have visibility into their employee records and we don't have the visibility of necessarily when a new hire was hired and did they make sure that they went through. So our business consultants are truly our franchise liaison partners. They have, um, we are, we're a very uh, family type culture. You know, even though we are over 800 locations, uh, we we all know our franchisees, you know, from on the from our company side all the way through. Uh, we don't look at anyone as you know as anything other than you're part of our brand. You're you are a partner with us, and you know, just certain regulations don't allow us that visibility into the employee records. Uh, so we do, but the the franchisees are very honest with our business consultants. They will. They will say, "Look, no, I didn't have. I didn't have time to sit them through the, all the training. It's. It's on my. It's on my to do list. Don't worry. We're gonna get to it. But I needed a body in there, and I had so and so standing next to him, tell him how to do it. Uh, you know. And so, you know, it, and you do have to have that flexibility with them, um, especially right now with the labor challenges that we are all facing. And um, but yeah, it's it's we have to leverage on them. Um, but our franchisees are pretty much an open book. A couple other benefits that I'll just mention. I think if you have the right, you know, digital technology on training and ops, you should use it as a sales tool during the franchise sales process. Franchise prospects should be told and explained. Here are all the benefits of what it is. We also uh, fund this out of our general fund. So we don't, our franchisees pay a royalty. They pay into an ad fund and that's it. There's no more additional charges that we nickel and dime them for. So I would highly encourage you not to assess a charge or a fee to anything that we've talked about today. I 100% agree with that. Uh, we offer all of the tools as the corporation. We pay for all of the tools. Uh, we, don't, we don't share the cost with our franchisees um, down to our third party food safety audits. We even pay for those. And that's not that common, by the way. I think the opposite is mostly true. Corporate stores get the tools. Franchisees sometimes mm -hmm. have to self-subscribe to these things. 
Right. So it's it's a great uh, great opportunity for sure. Absolutely. And my follow up question is from Matt. I'm just curious, how do I get one of those personalized initial <laughs> logo shirts? <laughs> He planned. I've known Jeff for way too long. <laughs> um, listen, I'm trying to brand myself. I gotta, I gotta pay the bills at some point. So these are, there's only a few of these in existence right now. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, my question is for the panel. Um, you guys mentioned you guys use a different, uh, different types of like digital apps and stuff like that um, for operations. And I was curious to know, do you guys currently use any um, apps to measure employee happiness or to engage with your employees and um, I guess to um, increase like the culture within the operations? So you know, I know we've I've looked into a number of different apps that, that manage you know, employee surveys. As of now, we're, we do send out regular employee surveys. We, try, we send them out quarterly and sometimes more frequently. And, you know, at the start of the pandemic, we were really trying to keep a pulse on just how people were feeling because um, things were changing so fast. But you know, we use a pretty simple form. Uh, it, it's not app-based. We're, we're using a pretty simple web-based form and just trying to capture all the data and, and store it all and then looking across stores um, and so we put together a little scorecard to look at every store against each other and what their responses were. But you know, that's something that for us is still do, happening in Excel. Uh, we do not use an app. Um, we do send out surveys, but we use a web-based form. And we do ask that we send it to each of the restaurants to their email, and we ask for the general managers to allow each of the members to sign in and can and just fill out this very simple survey. Um, we are looking at something along those lines um, because we do care about our employees. Um, we, you know, recently we, with the, a hurricane that came through um, the New Orleans area and the, the Houston area, um, we sent out a, a touch base and we sent, we knew everyone's you know, cell phone numbers. And so we sent out an are you safe text to all of our employees. So we're starting to do, a, do things a little more on the, on the mobile forms um, instead of it just being a web base. However, we haven't landed on anything that we just love. And so that, that's still a little bit of our challenge because we do want to get the pulse of our, of, down to our crew members. So it is something we're looking at. Yeah, so typically every, it was every year, now we've gone every two years, we do um, a franchisee survey through Franchise Business Review. We also do an internal corporate survey. Highly recommend it. Some of the information you, they provide, it, it is truly confidential. It can be eye-opening. So it's, it's really a good way to say, am I leading this company in the right way? I will tell you on the LMS system, there is a simple way to send out quick surveys through the app of you know, specific things. But what's been done for us is really about, you know, rate this training um, segment. And do you have any feedback of how it can get better? We're not really asking people, do you like working here? Or, you know, what, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I guess that's what Glassdoor is about, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> any other questions? Wow. Well, Matt, John, Danielle, thank you guys very much. I thank think, you. I think it was, thank you. It's great. It's great opportunity, and uh, it seemed like a lot was learned today, a lot shared. Yes. So it was uh, very, very exciting. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Okay.